Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video marks an exciting milestone for the channel. We're making year 11 economics easy as well. But if you're in year 12, don't switch off because what we're learning today is in the year 12 syllabus too. Today, we're looking at the circular flow of income model. I would argue that this is one of the most important concepts in the whole course, right from year 11 to year 12. That's because it can be used to explain almost every short-term movement in economic activity. So what is the circular flow of income model and how is it related to economic activity? When we experience an economic boom, it's good news because it means that we are spending more, producing more, and overall satisfying more wants and needs. This economic activity can be tracked by measuring income flows. Let's put this in a simple model, tracking the income flows between firms and households. Households provide resources like labor in exchange for income. This income goes back to firms in the form of consumer spending in exchange for goods and services to satisfy wants and needs. So you can see that this is a circular flow of income. And the more flow between them, the more economic activity to satisfy wants and needs. Everyone is happy. But the reality is, households don't just spend every dollar they earn. They save part of it. This takes income out of the circular flow. So we call this a leakage. Increasing the leakage will lead to less economic activity. The good news is, these savings can actually go back into the circular flow. When we save, we generally put them in financial institutions like banks, who then lend them out in the form of investments. These investments contribute to the circular flow of income again, so we call them injections. More injections will lead to increased economic activity. What you see here is called the three-sector circular flow of income model, as we've introduced financial institutions to the two-sector model. In the four-sector model, we also acknowledge that another leakage from the circular flow model is taxes to the government sector. An increase in taxes is another leakage, which also reduces economic activity. This tax revenue can be injected back into the economy through government expenditure, stimulating economic activity. Finally, in the five sector model, we introduce the foreign or international sector. Income leaves the circular flow to this sector via import spending, contracting the economy. But this sector can also contribute to export revenue to our economy. So in summary, leakages include savings, taxes and import spending, while injections include investments, government expenditure and export revenue. When both sides are equal, we call this equilibrium. And obviously, when they're unequal, we call it disequilibrium. When leakages are greater than injections, the economy will contract. If injections are greater than leakages, the economy will expand. Like I said, I think this concept is one of the most important concepts in the whole course because it explains almost every short-term movement in economic activity. For example, what caused our GDP growth rate to fall from 4.3% in 2008 to a low of 1.8% in 2009? It was the Global Financial Crisis, or GFC, started from a US housing crisis. It caused trade and foreign investment to decrease around the world, meaning less investment and exports in Australia. Furthermore, consumer and investor confidence also fell, so Australians saved instead of spending or investing. All of this meant an increase in leakages and decrease in injections, causing a contraction in the circular flow of income. And then what caused the second mining boom, where GDP growth went from 1.8% in 2009 to a peak of 3.9% in 2012? Kevin Rudd's government expenditure in 2009 helped to kickstart economic activity. More importantly, China's economy was increasing production, causing demand for Australian exports to increase. China also contributed high levels of foreign investment into Australia. Australian consumer and investor confidence subsequently increased, so savings fell. All of this meant that injections exceeded leakages and caused the economy to grow again. The subsequent movements in economic activity can also be explained by movements in the circular flow of income. At the time of recording this video, we're in the middle of social isolation due to the coronavirus. We haven't got the economic figures yet, but which components of the circular flow of income do you think are affected so far? How is the government sector responding? How is the RBA responding? Get into a habit of paying attention to these concepts in real life so that you can solidify your understanding. Let's practice what we learned today with some HSC questions. In 2017's HSC question 14, we're given a bunch of leakages and injections, and we're asked to figure out the impact on economic activity. Let's add up the leakages on one side and then do the same with injections. We'll find that leakages are greater than injections, and we know that this causes a contraction in the economy. Therefore, the answer is D. Like I said earlier, the circular flow of income model is really important because it explains almost every short-term movement in economic activity in Australia. 
So you really want to have a good understanding of this concept. I hope this lesson and the visual tools have helped make it easier for you to understand the circular flow of income. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like our Facebook page as well so that you don't miss out on future videos. I look forward to continuing to make HEC economics easy for you. See you next time.